Let's bring in Wall Street Journal, Kim Strassel, one of the great columnists at the Wall Street Journal, joining us today. I can't see Biden or Harris leading the Democrats in 2024. So who do you think might replace them? Well, you mentioned Pete Buttigieg. Um, we also had that whole roster of people. Remember, that was a really crowded field last time around, Stu. So uh, Cory Booker and Amy Klobuchar. And, you know, here's the interesting thing. Everyone's talking about how Biden is too old, but I wouldn't be surprised to see some other oldsters getting back in. You know, Bernie Sanders, he still would really love to be president. So I think that there could be quite a few people vying for it. Who, who ends up on top? That's a different question. Would you count Hillary Clinton? Clinton out completely. I would never count Hillary Clinton out of anything, sadly. Um, I think that she, it has been her lifelong ambition to be president, Stu, so don't ever count that out. But you, do you agree with me that it will not be Biden and Harris on the ticket in 2024? They'll be, they'll be replaced by somebody I, else. You agree with that? I think that that is highly, highly likely. The viciousness with which this is now all playing out. And, you know, can I also mention, Stu, that some of us actually had some concerns about Joe Biden's age and sure. how he got a little off step even just in the last couple of years before he ran. We weren't allowed to talk about it during the last election. Uh, it was taboo. The media shielded him. And now when it's convenient to blame all of the party's travails on his age, suddenly now it's open season. That's right. Uh, President Biden claims the U.S. needs more COVID money to think ahead for the next pandemic. Listen to this. Well, we'll get through at least this year. We, we do need more money, but we don't just need more money for vaccines for children eventually. We need more money to plan for the second pandemic. There's going to be another pandemic. We have to think ahead. And that's not something the last outfit did very well. That's something we've been doing for fairly well. That's why we need the money. Kim, the next pandemic? What's your reaction to that? <laughs> Well, look, you know what, Stu, there has been a lot of talk about how we probably will see some more pandemics down the road. But what makes that comment astonishing to me is that before we start talking about the next pandemic, can you actually begin handling the one we have at the moment a little bit better? Um, you know, the contrast, he actually talked about the last administration. They managed to get a vaccine produced and out the door in under a year. All this new administration had to do is come in, do a, a next Operation Warp Speed, get those therapeutics, get the medicines that we needed ready for the next waves. They, they totally didn't do that. And in fact, took $1.9 trillion in supposed COVID money and, and handed it out like candy to the states and now are pleading poverty and yet want more money for the next pandemic? Well, what, what about Joe Manchin? Just yesterday, he's on tape saying, no more big spending, build back better is gone. But the president is still pushing more spending. That will never go away, will it? They'll always want to spend more money. So even in the in the the midst of all of this inflation, you know this is textbook economics, dude. You know yeah. this. You spend too much money. Uh, you have loose money supply. You end up with inflation. And somehow they are turning reality on its head. And the administration is saying, oh, you know, our, our spending didn't cause this. And in fact, we will make it better by spending more money. It's it's astonishing. Who would have thought 18 months ago that we would end up in June 2022 like this? Vicious infighting in the president's <laughs> own party. Who would have thought? I didn't. I didn't know that. Kim, you're all right. Thanks very much for joining us. I hope you'll come back Thanks, again Steve. soon, OK?